Ni hao and good morning. And let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you to our third international conference organized by Innovations in Global Health Professional Education, otherwise known as IGHPE. You know, uh, my colleagues, both Dr. Bob Krohn and Dr. Toraya Risi, will be talking about IGHP's mission, strategies, and inner workings in the next session. But uh, let me just begin by providing some context as to how it started. And I know uh, my colleague, Dr. Victor Zhao, will be expanding on that, of course. Uh, a few years back, uh, both Dr. Zhao and I were talking at a conference, and we started discussing the gradient in terms of skilled workforce between the West and emerging economies, and what's the best way to overcome that gradient and to really uh, make contributions which are globally relevant. And we settled on uh, starting an open access journal, IGHPE, which will be promoting innovations in uh, introducing different models of health professions education. That has evolved into a digital platform and now a movement and organization. And as I said, my colleagues will be uh, getting into more detail. But very broadly, the mission of IGHP is really transformational. It's nothing less than transforming their learning in a way to improve global health. And we are very committed to uh, focusing on interprofessional learning, team-based learning, very patient-centered learning on a continuum between undergraduate to graduate to continuing professional development, and from there, a relevance to care de delivery above all. Let me step back a little bit and really acknowledge people who have push the whole agenda forward. Of course, above all, Dr. Victor Zhao, who I'll be introducing at the end of my comments, my distinguished colleague. But you know, uh, any kind of organization, for it to be successful, you need very committed people who have creative energy, who are pushing the agenda forward. And IGHP has been very fortunate to have a group of very committed, very creative, very energetic people coming from many illustrious organizations within the U.S. and all over the world. I mean, some of them I can name here, the American Medical Association, American Board of Medical Specialties, Council for Accreditation, Graduate Medical Education in the U.S., Harvard Macy Institute, and some very distinguished institutions like Stanford and Peking University. And some of those people are here amongst us who have been our board members right from the beginning. And uh, let me just point out the three of them who I know are here. To begin with, Professor Ko Yang, who really does not need any introduction here, who is an opinion leader in terms of global medical education, for sure, medical education in China. She has been involved with us right from the beginning, from the first meeting in Doha in 2015 and uh, has pushed the agenda along with all of us. So thank you, Dr. King Yang. That's good. <laughs> Dr. Luis Nora, who is the president of American Board of Medical Specialties, uh, who has been involved with us right from the beginning. Let's give her a hand, a lot of hands. <laughs> and right next to her, Dr. Kim Critchley, who was at the time Dean for Nursing at Calgary with us, but now is actually now is in real power, deputy minister of the, this uh, province in Canada where she not only makes public policy but also makes sure it gets implemented. So thank you all of you. You people have been really uh, the source of our inspiration and driving the agenda forward with energy. So getting back to the conference, I said this is the third international conference. The first two were held. The first one was in Doha and the second one uh, last year in Venice. The first one in Doha focused on larger Middle East, last one in Europe, and this one, of course, you have the agenda. You know that we are focusing on very much on preparing workforce and looking at the primary care and also standardization of education. 
But the whole second day, if you look at the program, really is focusing on innovations, both programmatic and technological. And there is going to be a showcasing of the technological products for whole two hours during the second day. I want you to really take a look at that showcasing during those two hours because they are unbelievably exciting products. I mean, you know, all of us who uh, recognize that technology is going to have a major, I would say immense, impact on medical education and care delivery over the next few years. Of course, all of us agree, and some of us are a little bit afraid also of uh, becoming cyborgs at some point. But uh, other than that, I think until we can enjoy it, my, my um, invitation to you is to come to the booth and uh, listen to their presentations. They are, they are fantastic. I mean, we know the AI is going to be there, the, you know, the mixed reality is going to be there, and the brain-machine interface is going to be there, and yes, of course, gene editing is right there now. So the world is not going to be the same as we know it. It's going to be transformed. But until that happens, let's enjoy it. And hopefully it will be all for good and some of the pessimism will go away about all of this. So at the end of this two days of full agenda, the question is, what is it that we are hoping for? What would be considered success? I mean, to me personally, I would say it would be like winning a lottery ticket if we came up with a real integrated, cohesive vision of health professional education to advance the agenda and to produce a very skilled workforce in China. And if we don't win the lottery ticket, at least let's begin a very meaningful conversation and dialogue, which we can then push ahead and network amongst ourselves. And I think that's... that's uh, something which all of us can very happily aspire for and settle for and be very happy if we can achieve that. So thank you all for coming in. I truly appreciate it. It's a pleasure and honor to welcome you again. Let me give you a hand. With that, it's my distinct pleasure and an honor to introduce my colleague, co-founder of IGHPE, president of National Academy, of medicine, someone who does not need any introduction, who's a global leader in healthcare, Dr. Victor Zhao. Any, many of you know Dr. Zhao, but you might not know that he really is truly transformational in multiple areas. I mean, he is the kind of guy who definitely transcends boundaries and disciplines. So yes, he has done all the traditional academic things, the physician scientists, the department chairs, and prestigious institutions, Harvard, Stanford, and then uh, being the president of Duke and chancellor of the healthcare system. But beyond that, he is one of those uh, restless intellect <laughs> who definitely is going to drive the agenda of improving the global health. And in his new position as the president of National Academy of Medicine, he truly has that bully pulpit to do that. Thank <laughs> you.